Hi, I'm Clyde Ogg with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension. I'm the Pesticide Safety Education Program Coordinator here at the University of Nebraska. I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about uh, gloves that you might use for use when handling and applying pesticides. Now, uh, everything that I'm going to refer to is available in, in this NEB guide that has been recently produced uh, about choosing the right pesticide uh, uh, protective gloves when you're when you're handling pesticides. So I would refer you to that. There's a lot of good information in there as far as a chart that allows you for comparison and, and so forth. Um, what I'd probably like to do first is talk about some of the materials that aren't really appropriate for use against uh, pesticides. Uh, probably the most obvious one is the either the PVC type of a glove or in this case a polyethylene glove. These are primarily intended for food service use or the PVC glove is really intended for use when doing things like uh, staining furniture and things of that nature. They're not durable, they don't resist against absorption of pesticides at all, so we just simply don't recommend them. Another one that uh, is inexpensive and a lot of times people uh, will pick up is a, a latex type of a glove. Uh, they also are not durable. Uh, they break down very rapidly uh, when exposed to pesticides, and so we don't uh, recommend those either. Um, another type of glove that uh, has its use is uh, available in a lot of different materials, but it might be available in the same type of chemical-resistant material that other gloves would be, but in this case it has a flock lining. And the flock lining is, is met for comfort, uh, it's also met for uh, using against certain things uh, that uh, might potentially get next to the skin and burn. So uh, they do have their use, but we really don't recommend them for pesticides because the pesticide can absorb into that flocking material and uh, re-expose you to that chemical uh, over time. So uh, we don't recommend those. Now probably the, f the lowest end for a, a glove that could be used in certain cases against uh, when you're protecting yourself from pesticides is a natural rubber glove. And uh, these are available relatively inexpensive. Uh, they will withstand uh, attack by the pesticides for a time, but then they do break down. Uh, they may be best appropriate for diluted product and when you're using uh, granulars or dust materials, uh, but for the concentrates, uh, they're, they're not going to hold up very long, so you may want to uh, consider choosing a different type of material. Now talking about some of the materials that are available out there, uh, I'll refer you again to the NEB guide so that uh, you can make the comparison yourself, but you'll notice that uh, EPA's most resistant material is a barrier laminate glove. And so when I first read about these, I thought, oh yeah, they're really terrific. They resist all attack by pesticides, and, and that would probably be the best choice. Uh, but once we got our hands on these and took a look at them, we realized they might very well resist pesticides, but they're not going to be very durable, and obviously uh, the way they're constructed makes them difficult to uh, handle objects and so forth. So uh, you may want to consider a different type of uh, material. Uh, the other one uh, that is the Viton uh, material. Uh, it's highly resistant to attack by pesticides and it's very good. Uh, the problem with it is it's quite expensive. Uh, well over $50 uh, per pair of gloves makes it so that you probably are only going to want to consider using it if you're handling directly with the concentrated material and you, you do that uh, day in and day out. You may want to consider that. But otherwise for general application use it's probably not a very good choice. Now the other three remaining materials uh, would be the butyl rubber, uh, the uh, neoprene, and the nitrile uh, gloves. The first one is the butyl rubber, and they're all about equally effective at uh, preventing penetration by pesticides, and so it's really a matter of choice uh, as to which of those materials you choose. You may want to consider cost a little bit. The, Butyl rubber might be a little bit more expensive than the neoprene or the, uh, the nitrile. Uh, the next one is the, the nitrile glove there. Uh, I'm sorry, the neoprene glove. Um, 
really there's very little difference between that and the uh, nitrile as far as uh, appearance, how they feel on the hand, and uh, how they hold up against pesticides. So that might just come down to which one is most uh, cost effective for purchase. So what we've been looking at are a number of different gloves, uh, including this last one that uh, you're looking at is the, the nitrile. These are all primarily designed to be reused. And uh, that means you can use them both for multiple application days and uh, however, at the end of each day, you need to be sure to clean those uh, carefully so that you don't carry pesticide residue over from day to day. But another option that we're recommending more and more uh, over time is to go to the disposable type of gloves. And uh, that I'm aware of, the nitrile material is the one that's uh, most readily available. Uh, they're uh, quite inexpensive and they're available in different weights. Uh, for instance, the lightest weight one is, I believe, is a three mil weight. Uh, they are not going to last as long as the little bit heavier weights, but there again, you have to balance that with the cost. They're, of course, going to be a quite a bit less expensive. Uh, the next weight up in, in that uh, scale would be about an eight mil uh, weight of uh, glove, and those I've found to be quite durable. Uh, they hold up uh, pretty well. Uh, however, you notice, uh, how short these gloves are. They simply don't extend very far up on the arm and uh, even with wearing long sleeves it leaves a chance for skin being exposed in between the glove and the sleeve. So what I've been recommending uh, recently is the even heavier weight which I believe is an 11 mil weight of disposable glove that also is designed with a, a longer cuff that will extend farther up on the arm and make it uh, so that you don't have that chance of having skin exposure uh, so much as with the other ones. So whatever weight you choose or design or style, any of those disposable nitrile gloves are going to be effective at protecting you against pesticides. So uh, please try to keep these things in mind and hopefully the information we've provided you with today uh, will be helpful when you make your decisions about purchasing gloves.